Welcome back. Time now for the main event of the evening, and this too should be a real belter. Ladies and gentlemen, it's standing room only. We're packed to the rafters here at the Everton Park Sports Centre for our main event, proudly presented by Barry Hearn for Ringside Boxing Promotions in association with Prince Promotions and Matchroom Sport. Sponsored here by Hasselroda and live and exclusive here on Sky Sports, you've joined us for a brand new season of championship boxing and the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the Commonwealth Council, their supervisor at ringside, Mr. Dennis Lockton. The timekeeper at the bell from Halifax is Mr. Colin Roberts, and the referee in charge of the action and taking part in his 40th Commonwealth Championship. He's from Birmingham, and it's star referee Terry O'Connor. They are the officials. Let's meet the contestants. It's 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant Commonwealth Championship. Introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue and white trunks trimmed with silver. Weighing in at nine stone, eight pounds, three ounces, bringing a 17 fight record, 14 wins. Seven inside the schedule distance and only three losses. He's from Shannon's Gym, fighting fit. Oldham, would you please welcome Gary Hooper. And ladies and gentlemen, Fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the red and white trunks trimmed with gold and weighed in at nine stone, eight pounds, two ounces. 21 fight record, 20 wins, six inside the scheduled distance and just one loss. He comes to the ring as an Olympic representative. Ladies and gentlemen, he's from Liverpool. Please welcome David Boone. Let's get the action underway, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant Commonwealth Lightweight Championship. We've had all the rules for this stuff and all sorts of say break on straight away. Shake hands, Mr. Luxbo. So we're just about ready for the main event. It's a vacant title. It's a title that was held by James Armagh, the tough Ghanaian, but he's had a kidney problem and he's relinquished it on the basis that He'll get a shot at the winner of this one. Ironically, David Burke here was supposed to challenge Armour back in Second May, job. but he was Round injured one. then. It looks like those two are destined never to meet. So it all means an opportunity, an unexpected one too, for Gary Hibbert from Oldham, a carpet fitter by profession. And uh, I guess sometimes, Spencer, it's just a case of being in the right place at the right time. He was already down on this bill to fight anyway on the undercard, and uh, here he is. He's got an opportunity to fight for a title. Well, it certainly is a case of right place at the right time. Hibbert slipped into this one. A much easier assessment for David Buck. James Armagh, the former champion, a real tough cookie. And David would now start a good favourite to win here against Gary Hibbert. David Buck, a very tall southpaw. sparring partners he used was Gary Hibbert and he's certainly uh, teeing off on him pretty well here in the first round and by the way while we're in the lightweight division we've just got some news that uh, Jason Cook from South Wales has achieved the near impossible he's gone to Italy and won a title he's the new European lightweight champion he beat Sandro Casamonica by knocking him out in the third round and uh, as his promoter Barry Hearn was uh, saying afterwards he said uh, well, he ever had two winners in Italy one was uh, Nigel Benn, that memorable fight against Mauro Galvano. It seems like a long time ago, back in 1990, I think it was. And now Cook. And Barry has promised Cook a first defence in his hometown of Maesteg. It's quite an achievement for Cook, isn't it? Well, that really is an amazement, amazing achievement for Cook to go out to Italy. There's not many fighters that go to Italy and come out victorious. So credit to Jason Cook. Well done. 
and best of luck for the future. And maybe one or two of these, maybe one of these fellas might be challenging Jason Cook in the future, but first they've got to get the business done here. That really is Gary Hibbert's lucky break, if you think about it, because the mandatory challenger was uh, Michael Nguya, another Kenyan, but he couldn't get into the country, he had a visa problem. Something to do with the British High Commission, I believe. But we don't get into the politics of these things, do we? And I'm sure Gary Hibbert doesn't, he's just happy to be here. I don't know whether he's going to be happy to be shipping any more punishment like that, I don't know. At the moment, Burke is uh, toying with him a little bit. Burke, an excellent southpaw counter-puncher. Very tall, very rangy. He'll be waiting for Hibbert to come in. And then he'll counter-punch Burke. That's genuinely his style. And a good start there from David Burke. For taking the first round on my card. Nice. He's wide open, get that jab going, and as he comes in, left up the foot. It really is a packed house here. I've, you and I have both been here for some uh, full houses before. This seems uh, a little fuller than most, if that's at all possible, if that makes any sense. Just no room at all. And I'll tell you what, it's been one heck of a build. Yeah, been a tremendous build tonight. And if this one can live up to the last two contests we've seen, and we've got to be in for surely show of the year. The better work coming from Burke in that first round. As you say, Spencer, he's so rangy and awkward, isn't he? He's just uh, a very tough guy to land cleanly on. He really is. I boxed David myself many years ago, back in 1994. What a difficult guy to fight he is. They talk about it's the black lights that descend when the uh, <laughs> when you get knocked out. I tell you, the black lights descended on all of us then. Thank goodness that was a, a temporary power blip. I bet they were both panicked for a second in there as well. Good left hand. I tell you what, I've been seeing the black lights there after that one, Hibbert. He can't allow Burke to get on top and dominate early here if he's going to have any chance at all for it. But at the moment, he's looking a bit outgunned, it has to be said. Well, that's good work again from Burke. Burke's brought a lot of fans. You'd expect that. It's his hometown. But uh, from just along the M62 in North Manchester, or Oldham to be exact, Hibbert's brought some fans with him. I was chatting to one or two of them actually what a funny story they said well we couldn't all come because we were supposed to be going to a wedding today so apparently they've split up some have come here and some have gone to the wedding which one would you have chosen spence i think i would have had to choose the boxing show here and what a right decision they've made after seeing those first couple of contests crisp tonight but yeah just waiting to counter punch waiting for Hibbert to come in and then makes his move with that long left he drives through he made to look a little bit pedestrian here Hibbert last time out he was uh, stopped by one of those Russians with a name that he just can't pronounce but before that he'd uh, He'd stopped a former French champion, Yannick Paget. That was back in October. So, he's not a mug. No, also had a very good one-round victory over former amateur star, Alan Temple. That was a good result. going straight through that guard with those jabs. The southpaw is, is always a difficult target to hit anyway, and at the moment, Hibbert is just unable to find any of the answers. It's a bit better, the right hand got through. A nice right hand there from Hibbert. Best shot of the contest for him so far. But 
vaccines you've picked up. A little mouse under the left eye. What are you doing now? Let, do, let, what you do is you're letting him work, and that's what you've got to do. Let him work. Almost on. Yes, there it is. Quite a nasty one. He does. He doesn't cut, but he does bump, doesn't he? If the, if, I'm not quite sure. Maybe he doesn't have the rice paper skin you were talking about. And Jamie McKeever in the last fight. His skin is made of sterner stuff. No, not a proper cut. It's a mouse. On a go. There you go. It's a mouse. That's a technical term. You heard Spencer use it. As soon as he, as soon as he comes in. As soon as he comes in. It's not for it. It's not for it. Two rounds and uh, two in the bag for this fella for you, Spencer. Yeah, David Burke winning the first two on my card. Counter punching well. Is that lovely left hand through the middle? Round three. Give it, chip that shot well. I wonder if this is going to be one of those fights that the longer it goes on, the more Hibbert will get into it. Very late substitute. 72 hours notice he had for this fight. He wouldn't be the first guy to come from nowhere and spring a surprise. But for Burke, I guess the advantage is it's not an unknown entity there in front of him. He has sparred with Hibbert, he knows him. Well, they go back a long way. We all boxed on the same England team way back from when we were 12 years of age, right through their amateur careers. So they know each other very well and they would have sparred on a number of occasions from when they were small boys. closer and try and break the rhythm of David. David just trying to wait to counter punch. Hibbert's giving him that space at the moment. Good straight left, thuds into the face of Gary Hibbert. Well, after that last fight, I've, I've almost lost a bit of confidence in knowing what I'm seeing, but clearly the quality work surely is coming from Burke. He's absolutely in control of this fight. Yeah, very textbook stuff here from Burke. You can see that he carries that from his amateur days and his international boxing. Similar to a Richie Woodall type, very tall, upright, textbook boxing. Hibbert landed a good right hand straight into the solar plexus there, then followed up with a low one. strange situation for Burke in many ways there he was expecting to fight Amar which would have been a real tough one for him and then the, the Kenyan's name was floated up there it was a bit of an unknown entity and he'd won a qualifier so he deserved the shot so he started to prepare for him and then he got blown out courtesy of uh, governmental red tape and in comes Hibbert and throughout it all he's a very placid sort of oh got him Lovely left hand, straight through the middle, right on the bell there. Yeah, right on the bell. That could be very good news for Gary Hibbert. Surely stepping to your right hand side, wasn't it? Solid left hand. You've got to keep focusing through the middle. Like you say, it's always difficult. When your opponent changes, Burke would have been training for Armar. And in comes Gary Hibbert, but there was that left hand high on the head. They're the ones that kind of make you lose your balance more than anything, aren't oh, they? I really do scramble the brains, those shots. Some shivers down the legs. Those. Because you can see the head's clear now, he's all right. That's not the kind of shot that will do damage in the sense that it takes the undercarriage away. He should be okay for that one, especially with the bell sounding when it did. Seconds out. 
round four. But nevertheless, it's a, literally at the back there, it is standing room only. You, there just aren't enough seats in this place for this, this bill. And an absolute cracker. Hibbert a long way behind already. Oh, good left hands. But none of this chopping and changing of opponents seemed to seem to flush to Burke at all. He just got on with his business, didn't he, in the build-up, and, and has done so here. Yeah, that's very, very professional indeed, because he must have been watching hundreds of tapes of Armagh, who we've seen over here a number of times. Very tough and very different opponent to Gary Hibbert. So he's got on with that very well, very professionally. Yeah, he'll have his work cut out with Armagh, there's no doubt about that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. He's first got to get rid of Hibbert. Burke doing the better work, still counter-punching very well. Hibbert not doing enough in there at the moment. Respecting Burke's power too much. He just can't seem to work out this southpaw style, can he, Hibbert? No, he can't find a way in, needs to feint some shots, start leading off with his own right hand, which is the key shot against the southpaw. He should lead off first with the right hand, follow up with the left hook. He leads off with that jab, but just steps on the outside and comes with his own left hand. Again from Burke. Oh, yeah. now Hibbert's... <laughs> Hibbert's been watching too many wrestling tapes. Even then he didn't execute the hip toss. Yeah, a bit of frustration there coming out from Hibbert. Can't get in, can't land a shot. Burke can and did. The leg's gone again here of Hibbert. Got him again, you know. The legs are going and the bell's about to sound once again. Gary Hibbert's been saved by the bell, but these fans know it's just delaying the inevitable. Well, another big round from Park. Well, these fans are happy, I'm sure. That, that's Burke's brother there, the fellow in the grey shirt, in the uh, just to the right of the screen there, isn't it? Yeah, that's Stephen Burke. Just won the AVA title himself last month at the same weight. Ironically, and they'd be looking to follow in his brother's footsteps. David, the older one. David is the older brother, yes, yeah, Stephen. Still the amateur. I'd say just picking up the national senior ABA title. Ten and seconds. Be looking towards boxing in the Olympics next, I suppose. Seconds out, round six. I've announced it as round six. Unless I've dozed off for three minutes, it's actually round five. It's been one of those nights, hasn't it, really? We're all getting <laughs> caught up in it. Well, there's been so much action this evening. And now even the timekeeper's getting it wrong. It is definitely <laughs> round five. Solid left hand again from Burke. I don't want to take anything away from him, but who's coming and giving it the best he's got, but uh, he really does look like a fellow that's been uh, chucked in at the deep end a little bit, and he's out of his depth. <laughs> Hardly landed a worthwhile shot so far, has he? No, he's not stepping in with those shots. You watch, I said, the lead right hand is the best shot to throw. We saw him just throwing it there, but he's falling short all the time. The reason for that is because he's not stepping up with his front foot, his left foot. He needs to step in with that left foot, get in range, and the right hand will land, but he's throwing it 
and the left foot's out of range, so he's falling short. And Burks make finding it quite easy just to counter punch with his own left. Like that. It, it always amazes me how, how much fuss you orthodox guys always make about South Pauls. South I mean, there's enough of them about that you can't really make it as an excuse that, oh, they're a South Pauls, I can't work them out. You, you've got to work them out, haven't you? You know, I never, my trainer was a South Pauls, so I never had problems with South Pauls, and I think out of all the contests I've boxed, over half of them were South Pauls themselves. But orthodoxes do have problems with the South Pauls. What's the saying? They should have been drowned at birth, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm a South Pauls. That's what I mean. Hibbert avoiding any great dramas here, but still not really doing too much. He's tightening up the defence a little bit. Those left hands were going straight through in the earlier rounds, but uh, he started to tighten up, but just not doing any kind of offensive work at all. No. Falling short, and then there's no head movement even from Hibbert. And Burke really dominating in there and enjoying things at the moment. I hate to say it, but it's it's, it's kind of turning into another sparring session, isn't it? For Burke, it, it's pretty much how he's treating it. He's just picking him off pretty much as he wants to now. He isn't just systematically breaking Hibbert up. It's a shame because we all love the fairy tale element of boxing. The guy that gets pitched in and given his chance is the old Rocky movie all over again, isn't it? But uh, I think this fairy tale is going to turn into a nightmare for Gary Hibbert. This fellow's not going to play with the uh, Cinderella script. Just getting on the swab on the eye there of Burke. That mouse just threatening to open up, but in complete control. Hasn't lost a round on my card. And Hibbert. Really going to struggle to find a way back here. So there's the proof. That was la round five, the last one. We're now getting ready for round six. Keep it off, keep it off. Seconds out, round six. There we go. The timekeeper's back on track as well. We're all on the same page of the script, except perhaps Gary Hibbert. This is not the script he'd have written for himself. And it really is. It's difficult to see what he can do unless he can land a, a, a lucky right hand out of somewhere, but there's been not much evidence of it at all. Yeah, Hibbert looking a bit disheartened in there now. Can't find a way past Bucks. Southpaw jab. When he gets past the jab, he walks straight into the left hand. You talk about you know, a boxer breaking another boxer's spirit, and I, I, I guess that's what Burke is doing here, isn't it? Just sapping his man's morale. Not hurting him, but just beating him in every phase of the game. But that's what he's doing every round that goes by. Hibbert gets more disheartened. Watch it. I'll tell you, Hibbert's army of fans has been pretty quiet. They're probably all thinking, oh, I wonder what's going on at the wedding. I'd like to see Burke step it up a bit here, thinking in terms of where he can go and what he's got to do. I mean, he's he's pretty much toying with this fella now and, and really wants to be uh, getting rid of the, getting rid of guys like this if he wants to move up in class. Well, that's exactly it. That's what's missing. This is a complete performance from Burke, doing everything lovely. It is now time to step it up because he feels if he does that, he can have this contest over before that final bell. minutes this from Burke, just a little flurry, and just happy just to keep his man at range, looks like he's taking a breather here. Maybe that 
might be a strategy for him to think about. A bit of pressure fighting, really get this fella on the back foot, see how he likes that. Well, that's what I said from the beginning, because Berkey's a counter-puncher anyway, you can't give him any space, you've got to get up close to him and just keep outworking him. And him has allowed him to have the space, and Burke does what he does, does best, counter-punches, good left hands. Shot downstairs, broke his fans up. Yeah, but more quiet round from Burke there. He didn't do much at all, did he? He's still doing enough to win the round. Hibbert should have jumped on that chance and really tried to step the pace up, tried to break, break the pattern That's of this contest. Out. He's thinking, sink them up, up, up in the working now, and then he's feeling every one of them go. It's a very lazy round from David Burke if we're going to be critical. When you walk, when you get, when you're backing off, that's when you want to fill up. You make sure you get the last word every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. I mean, you don't want opponents hanging around there, do you? They might just pop up with something unexpected. If you've got someone on the run, you've got to finish the job and get rid of them. Setting them up for it now, Dave. That's how it's. So we go into the second half of this battle for the vacant Commonwealth lightweight title. The title that James Armagh, that very gritty Ghanaian, had to relinquish because of a health problem. He's been promised a rematch, or a, not a rematch, a shot at the winner of this one. And I'll tell you what, if it's Burke, Burke will have to raise his game for that one. Yeah, we mentioned Amar, already a real tough cookie. We've seen over here a couple of times. And that's a tough assessment for David Burke. But he's got to come through this one first. Gary Hibbert. been a bit over critical here Spencer and, and please tell me if you think I am but this isn't the kind of performance so far from Burke that kind of raises his stock at all it's just a it's a very routine performance from him against a, an opponent no disrespect to him but that, that doesn't really belong in the ring with him well Burke started the contest really well looks impressive over the last couple of rounds to take his foot off the gas but he just threw a couple of shots there and then stopped, stepped back to admire his work and say oh didn't I do well there He needs to be doing better than this if he wants to threaten any of the other leading lightweights out there. Colin Dunn, WBU champion, recently joined Matchroom. Now you've got Jason Cook, the new European champion, James Armar coming back. There's some good lightweights out there. going there from Burke, trebling up on that. That was an injection of pace we needed to see. We need to see some more of that from Burke. And Hibbert coming back with absolutely nothing. That's better from Burke. The quick switch to the body. say this for Gary here but he's a game little so-and-so isn't he because he's still coming forward looking for something yeah he's sticking to his game and maybe just drawing a bit of energy from Burke after the last couple of rounds because Burke not produced too much and Hibbert slowly getting back into it and maybe having the best round of the contest for himself so far starting to work the body well of Burke I'll tell you what 
it's his fans you can hear chanting as well. They've suddenly found a voice. I mean, 10 out of 10 for effort in that last round for Hibbert. Listen, you don't push in like you do it. Don't push. Take your feet with you. Right? Take your feet with you all the time, Gary. Do you? Good advice. Yeah, that's, well, that's exactly what I was saying. He's throwing the right hand. Fully short the reason for that is because the front foot is not in distance. So perfect advice there yeah, from the Hibbert corner. Well, Burke producing all the quality still, despite Hibbert's real all-out effort. Round eight. It is round eight, isn't it? I believe so. I've got Burke seven ahead. Yeah, I've got Burke seven ahead at the moment as well. Mind you, after that last fight, who were we to judge? Yeah, that was some really strange refereeing going on there. in control here David Burke and just ducking under that with a telegraphed right cross from Hibbert he just looks for openings doesn't he Hibbert but they're just not there for him it's down to confidence he's not committing himself he can see the openings but not taking the charge because he's been hurt early Floored in the third round, and he's respecting belt too much. I think we just hit the nail on the head there. He, he's been given this chance, hasn't he, Spencer? But he doesn't quite believe he can do this, Gary Hibbert, and I think that's his problem. There's that nagging doubt at the back of his mind. Oh, this is David Burke. He's too good for me. And as you say, that early shake-up. in Hibbert's corner saying you've got to work Gary and he's, he's just not putting in enough work right here and Burke is just coasting through these rounds now well that swelling under the left eye of Burke is really starting to disfigure I mean it started out as a mouse it's more of a rat now isn't it yeah, good really shot spreading across the face there of David Burke Uh, caused him any problems at all in this fight and this eighth round has plodded away as indeed most, many of these middle rounds have done Burke seems happy just to build up his lead and coast his way through and take him up with him yeah a bit messy here in the eighth round Burke falling short with his shots as well Nice. Keep him busy all the time. Yeah. Keep him busy, Oscar. Keep him busy, and he can't throw nothing back at you. Well, that's good advice as well. Interesting situation we've got here. The uh, you don't see this too often in British boxing these days, the way the, uh, the business works. But the last two fights, all four fighters have all come from the same promotional stable. That's uh, Matchroom. And there is that sort of unwritten rule that, that stables don't put fighters up against each other, but uh, it's good to see that that's not uh, not the case because I always think that means you get guys that should be fighting each other being avoiding each other through politics. I never like to see that. Yeah, because the promoter doesn't like to take the gamble of two good fighters and losing one of them, so they like to try and build them up. But it's good to see that a promoter's willing to put both of these boys in together, and on this case, in two of the contests, so. It's great to see. Round nine. David Burke in the red and white. 
from Liverpool, well ahead of the late substitute here, Oldham's Gary Hibbert. lacking here if there is such a thing Burke has just picked him off pretty much at will yeah complete control in there from David Burke dominating I think he's starting to wear down here Hibbert you know Spencer I think he's been broken mentally now and he's just kind of plodding away he does look a bit disheartened in there Hibbert but then this really has turned into which you rightly nailed on the head yourself, Nick. A sparring session. I bet it wasn't much more competitive than like this. It was in the gym. Just a little flurry all the time from Burke, isn't there? There's no sustained pressure. No, seems no desire or hunger to get this fella out of there. I, you just feel that there's a couple of gears he could find here and, and put this fella away. Which is what he needed to do. He started so well, but then just fell into this rhythm. And you see that little injection every now and then. But if he would sustain that, could, you'd feel that he could get Gary Hibbert out of there. Some of those guys we mentioned, Dunn, Cook, Armagh, he wouldn't get away with this against those fellas, would he? No, because those guys keep working. We've seen Colin Dunn work from the first bell to the last. Three minutes of each round. James Armagh the same. Jason Cook. Big puncher works with tremendous work rate. I mean, he wouldn't live with those guys on this performance. That was a real good left hand that Burt landed there, and you saw Hibbert just grit his teeth and then apply the headlock. He has been watching too many wrestling videos. Straight through the guard again, and Hibbert gave him his due, plugging away here, but every time he does come forward, he ends up on the wrong end of it and it's a very weary looking Gary Hibbert that goes back to his corner well he's on his way to a Commonwealth title barring any late drama here so this crowd will be happy yeah complete controlling there Buck Hibbert looks disheartened does, he? He's just building Burke who put the foot on the gas and try and impress with a good finish. That's really what's missing here this evening. It is. You, you do sense that Burke could have put this one away by five or six, quite frankly. And whilst you don't want to take anything away from Hibbert, it's the fact that Burke hasn't really bothered to go through the gears that he's still there. It's tough to make a case for Hibbert winning a single round in this fight, it really is. Yeah. But dominated by behind that southpaw jab and doing so again here at the start of the tenth. You hear the corner saying, work, Gary. But he's tried to work. But just doesn't have enough there. There's no shortage of effort from Hibbert. It's just got that sparring feel about it, hasn't it? It's just got a real sense of edge. Yeah, you can tell they've been sparring partners, the touching of gloves. And They're probably good mates outside the ring as well. You never got any mates in there, Nick. Exactly. And this is the business after all. Oh, you got him that time. And he was coming on. And then he took one here, but I'll tell you what, Terry O'Connor's having a real good look at him. 
Jesus, are you all right? Yes. Left hand. The oh. middle course. Oh, he's got him again. And this is trouble. Big trouble. Terrell Connor's looking. I think he's going to step in. He's all over the place. There it is. Yeah. Good stoppage. Yeah, nothing left there from him. It. He's a left hand that put him down. He'd taken better shots previously in the earlier rounds. But I think there was just nothing left. He was training probably for a six-round contest on the undercard. All of a sudden, his cap holding into a 12-rounder. There was nothing left. To take nothing away from David Park. He had his problems too with changes of opponents. Come through with flying colours. And now, he's a newly crowned lightweight Commonwealth champion. Well, he did what he could, didn't he, this fella? But in the end, I think it was his heart that was broken. See Wayne Rigby in the corner there. With Hibbert. Well, he took his time about it. But in the end, we did get the finish that we expected. If you're going to be critical, you should say, well, that should have come four or five rounds earlier, quite frankly. But, well, you said it, Spencer. We need a strong finish for him. And just as you said that, he delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, referee has called a halt to the battle. One minute, 59 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Terry O'Connor has stopped the contest. Hibbert in no position to continue. Your winner and a new Commonwealth lightweight champion from Liverpool. Great night of boxing, hope you've enjoyed Champions it as much as we have. For Spencer Oliver, this is Nick Halling saying until next time, bye-bye.